Hi guys, options uh, part two. Uh, hopefully I get into some more meeting information here. Um, literally five minutes has passed. I've just been uh, typing some notes so I don't stutter and I don't uh, linger too long on one subject. I'm gonna break down Nordstrom's contract that I bought. So I bought a contract for Nordstrom stock that expires uh, today is September 30th, 2020. My contract expires January 20th, 2023. Uh, but for our example, we're going to use uh, the contract expires September 30th, 2022, exactly two years from now. Um, doesn't make a difference. You'll see what I mean. So for this example, we're assuming that Nordstrom stock is exactly $12. And for this example, we want to assume that Nordstrom stock will hit $30 a share uh, on or before September 30, 2022. So let's go and get into it. So I'm buying a contract. The people who are selling this contract to me want $400. What am I paying $400 for? Uh, this contract I'm buying is actually for a $15 call and the stock currently is at uh, $12 so what does that mean I'm looking at three tiers uh, intrinsic value uh, volatility value and time value so because the stock price is less than the current price I have zero intrinsic value um, that's going to remain zero until the stock price exceeds the current listed price of the stock. So for $400 on one contract, I get to decide what I want to do with uh, 100 shares. I'm paying $200 for time and I'm paying $200 for vol uh, volatility. but. To be more realistic, I'm probably paying a little bit more like 350 for time volatility and uh, more like uh, 50 for, uh, for 350 for time and uh, 50 for volatility. Um, it seems like it's a downtrending stock. People don't think it's going to bounce back. So the reason this contract makes sense is because we are assuming that everybody in the market is an idiot and we're gonna be outsmarting them otherwise this contract would be worth more uh, you can't buy a Tesla contract for four dollars because everybody is assuming Tesla is gonna be much higher in the future and if you want to have that option that opportunity to purchase that contract you're gonna have to pay through the nose for it so in this example we're gonna say that on September 30, 2021, exactly one year from now, the stock has gone from $12 to $20. What will my contract be worth? Well, I've lost one year exactly on my time. So 350, let's cut that down exactly by half. It's going to be now uh, 175. Uh, volatility has gone up so I paid $50 in this contract for volatility the stock has gone up quite a bit but before we were out of the money which means we had to pay more for volatility now that we're in the money we're not going to be able to sell this contract for very much on volatility it's gonna be with the trend of the stock so if the stock is $20 uh, if it goes up to 21, that's where we're going to be able to sell it. If it goes down to 19, that's where we're going to be able to sell it. We're not going to be able to use volatility as a value because we're already in the green. We're already in the money. So that's zero. So I have $175 in time, zero in volatility, and I bought the $15 call. Uh, so now it's $20. That means my option contract if I were to sell it in exactly one year and the stock is twenty dollars now it's worth 
15 plus 5, 20, so 500 plus 175, so 675. I should be able to expect something like that for this contract. It's, it's a normal amount. Is it worth selling? I paid $4 for this contract. I did make money on this contract. Uh, so for four, from 400, now I'm at uh, 675. I have more than 50% on the contract because 600 would be 50%. I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty. If you wanna do the calculation, that's fine, I don't care. Um, I don't want to hold the contract all the way to September 30, 2022. I wanna sell this contract, say June, 2022. Let's say the contract, the stock price is up at $28, maybe $29. I'm still gonna have a little bit of time, but it's not gonna be worth much because I'm only gonna have three months left on that contract. I don't care about time anymore because I'm in the money now. I don't care about volatility because I'm in the money now. The only place where I'm earning value from this contract is in the intrinsic value of the stock. So I paid $400 for this contract in volatility and in time. Now I've earned intrinsic value in this contract from $15 up to $29, uh, 29 minus 15, 14, uh, $1,400. I've paid uh, $400 for this contract. Let's see, uh, double, uh, so eight you know, add another 100 percent it's 12 a little bit more um, i'm up maybe 350 percent that's not bad that's not bad at all i'm up 350 percent on that contract is it better than if i had just bought the stock that's a tough question if i wanted to put 400 dollars in the stock at $12 a share, I would have maybe only been able to buy 40 shares, 35 shares, something like that. But now I'm able to sell this contract based on 100 shares. If I'd owned the shares, were there dividends? Yes. Um, was there a vote maybe that I could have participated in? Maybe, I don't know. I, it's, it's not going to be up to me to choose. So what I recommend is have something in the stock itself. Always have a little bit of the stock. You need to understand a lot about the stock in itself before you get into the contracts. This is important. In the options, it's not very liquid. There isn't a lot of people buying and selling these things sometimes. You might be the only one trying to sell this and the only one that's available to buy this is the broker that sold it to you to begin with. You might be losing money on this like nobody's business and the broker's taking your money and they're laughing at you because you were silly enough to buy the contract. So on a stock like Nordstrom, before we get into contracts and options, what kind of uh, stock trading volume is there on a daily basis? What kind of options volume is there on a daily basis? We need to be aware of this. We don't wanna end up with that option on the last day and we're stuck with it and we can't sell it and it executes. And now we have 100 shares of that company that we have to pay for at $15 a share, 15 times 100, $1,500. Um, that's, unless you're ready for that, I wouldn't recommend doing that. You need to make sure you're in a place where you can sell that uh, contract. Let's pivot for a moment to a stock that there's options for. So how can we tell if a company has good options, has as good uh, opportunities in it, that is, it's worth it. Well, if your broker makes that available, then, then it's a good contract, it's a good uh, stock. Um, 
uh, you can look this up yourself. Look up MFA. Look up IVR. I think those contracts, those options only go out about three months. There's no interest in them. There's no demand. You can't ask somebody where this stock will be in two years from now because nobody cares. Nobody's interested in it. The daily volume in these stocks, purchases and sales, is very low. These stocks might go up one or two cents a day. They might go down one or two cents a day. They don't do 5%. They don't do 10%. They're not in the news like that. Something catastrophic has to happen for them to be on the news. They usually don't pop like that upwards. Um, we're looking at Tesla. We're looking at Apple. We're looking at uh, VOO, S&P 500. Uh, we're looking at SPY, S&P 500. These are very popular to be traded on. Um, you can get an option that expires pretty much on almost any Friday that you want. Most all options are uh, deadlined on Friday. Their, their termination is Friday. Um, so if you're going to get into options, you need to know what kind of volume the stock has, what kind of interest and demand the option has, and you need to know whether or not there's demand for this option far out. You don't want to be the only one out there. Um, the one benefit of Robinhood is if you're out there in the way, way options and you haven't really done your research, it tells you, hey, you're the only one out here. There's nobody else interested in what you're trying to buy or sell. You're competing with a broker. Are you sure you want to compete with a broker right now? So that's something I like about Robinhood. I don't know if anybody else has covered that. You got it here. I hope there's some added value to you. I hope I'm explaining options in a way that makes it understandable. So quick recap, you have time volatility, you have, you have time decay, you have volatility, and then you have intrinsic value. You always want to trade your time and volatility for intrinsic value. Uh, you don't want to do uh, put options, you don't want to do too many crazy things you don't want to do options that have multiple sections or multiple segments the reason I'm saying this and this video is kind of getting long but it's important for you to understand why not to do multiple options or option spreads because in order for you to get those option spreads filled somebody must sell you each one of those contracts it might not be the same person most likely it's not the same person selling that to you why would somebody have the exact opposite opinion of what you have? Um, you're going to end up losing uh, pricing power. You can say, I want this contract at $4. I'm only selling it at $5. That segment of your contract might not execute, and that'll throw off your entire uh, purchase transaction. Unless you're willing to allow for the gap in the contracts, then you're going to have some issues. Uh, you, can't, you can't be allowing people to sell the contract for whatever price they want and then buy the contract for whatever price you want. You should aim to get the price that you want. You should only sell it uh, if you're in a panic or you've made so much money that you're not going to be greedy anymore you're getting rid of it uh, out of the kindness of your heart to let somebody else maybe make a few dollars off of it uh, usually the broker uh, because uh, those options end up going uh, down to zero but uh, the broker's happy because you didn't make even more money on it uh, I'd like to say like, comment, and subscribe, but I think I'm putting a conclusion to this video now. Anyway, please like, comment, subscribe. I'm going to make one more video about options, see if I can explain it again in a different way that'll make even more sense. Maybe uh, this one didn't explain everything perfectly, but I hope I did a good job. So uh, we can... Uh, 
keep going and uh, let me know what your questions are so I can get them answered. And uh, if I give you good answers, good feedback, I can make uh, better videos so that everybody else going forward has a better learning experience. And you know, uh, obviously I'd like to make money, but I don't mind if you make money. I don't mind if you make money listening to me. Um, Sorry for umming, but uh, see you guys next time, guys. Bye. Can't find the off button.